So the Bergeron process, remember, for test purposes, that's about all you need to know about the formation of snow as far as I'm concerned. But you might need to know the previous part um, video that I just recorded talked about how do you get snow from clouds that start out as the Bergeron process. And the answer to that is basically here at ground, at the ground, you need to be cold. So that's known as a melt. But um, my point here is that there are warm clouds up there that there is no um, no way that we have temperatures so that crystals, um, water crystals can form. And so within these warm clouds, we have a different process. Um, and so one of the things about within these warm clouds is you're never going to get a temperature inversion. I think this is right, such that it will fall. It, it forms as rain okay, in a process, not the Bergeron process, something I'm going to call collision coalescence process. It forms um, rain uh, droplets that fall from the cloud, and you're never going to get a cold pocket of air such that that, um, that precipitation is going to refreeze. Okay, so it will fall as rain. Is my um, the cloud condensation nuclei up there in these warm clouds are mostly that hygroscopic um, type of CCN cloud condensation nuclei. Those are the ones that they're, those are the partiers. Those are the ones that those are the uh, cloud condensation nuclei that want, that really thrive on getting um, uh, water vapor particles to go ahead and join together and to make liquid. Um, so. Um, I want you to kind of picture within that cloud um, these uh, little cute little liquid water particles, little nuggets of water that has gone ahead and around the cloud condensation nuclei liquefied. So now they will fall kind of through that cloud. One of the things about, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this uh, in this part, but there is an ongoing sort of kind of um, well, actually, we talked about this, this, the fact that we have kind of an updraft going on sort of all the time from high pressure to low pressure, vertically speaking. It's a subtle thing. So we have a little bit of that going on, but that's not my point. Um, those little liquid water particles are falling within the cloud, but they aren't falling at the same speed. Um, the other thing is that as they fall um, to towards the Earth's surface, they are going to uh, pick up speed. They're going to go faster and faster, faster, according to um, the little g, the 9.8 uh, meters per second is how much every second they fall, they're going to go faster, 9.8 meters per second, per second. Okay? That's everything falls at that rate, um, accelerates at that rate towards the Earth's surface. But here's the deal. They will, depending upon the size of the liquid particle, reach what we call a terminal velocity. Um, terminal velocity is basically it'll stop accelerating. Okay, objects can reach a terminal velocity. And do you remember a few slides ago, this is still in chapter five, where I showed a cloud and within that cloud an assortment of particle sizes. Um, these would be liquid particle sizes. And that's important. What we're going to see is that it's important that the lighter ones, the smaller ones, both light and small, they end up with a slower terminal velocity. The heavier they are, they have a faster terminal velocity. Okay? And so this kind of summarizes how that works. So small cloud droplets, um, they have a terminal velocity of 0 0.006 uh, miles per hour. Okay. The large raindrops, now raindrops instead of cloud droplets, large raindrops that are ultimately going to um, smack you on the head potentially, notice that they are falling at a terminal velocity. They max out at 20 miles per hour. And then we have everything in between here. So you have an assortment of sizes of liquid particles within that cloud falling at an assortment of um, terminal um, velocities. So that's important to what we call the um, collision coalescence process of ultimately getting rain from a cloud. Um, so collision coalescence. Collision happens first. Coalescence happens second. Um, collision is what it sounds like. Basically, those assortments of liquid particles are going to collide with each other. 
Now, there's something called collision efficiency, and a collision efficiency basically is kind of a gauge of how um, effectively they might merge. Uh, the word coalesce, collision coalescence, coalesce means merge together, okay? So you might think, well, of course, liquid water particle going fast, meet liquid water particle kind of going slow, they're going to collide, they're going to make one larger liquid water particle. Not so much, and I'll kind of show you how this works. Um, if we kind of think of the larger one, kind of shown here, called the collector drop, as falling with a faster terminal velocity, notice that in its wake it has the smaller um, liquid, wa liquid water particles, okay? Now, anything that's moving like this creates in front of it, in its leading edge, it creates a high pressure. This is really, uh, you probably noticed this before where if there's like a feather floating through the air and you're like, or a piece of lint, you're like, I'm gonna get that piece of lint or that feather because it annoys me. When you go to grab it, it scoots away. And the reason is when you go to grab it, you are creating a high pressure in front of you. And one of the things we know about difference in pressures between high and low is it creates a movement of air. So you're creating a wind that's moving um, because of the high pressure associated with your movement. And that's exactly what happens to, um, in front of this collector drop. So basically this collector drop then kind of fights its own high pressure in front of it. So a lot of these smaller particles kind of scoot to the side and that's kind of tied in with what we call its it's not as efficient as it would like to be, probably, okay? But they do look, grow larger. Remember, the larger water particles are falling faster through an assortment of sizes, and so they do grow larger, and this is kind of showing you, gonna show you that process. So you see the collector drop growing larger. Now, one of the things is we tend to kind of think of rain droplets as kind of having a tear shape. Not so much. They end up kind of having, a, when they get large enough, kind of having a... Uh, kind of a flattened out sort of hamburger bun looking thing and then and actually they've done experiments in the lab to kind of see what happens it when it falls and gets larger the larger it gets it gets kind of flappy okay and so I don't know if you can kind of see almost this sort of flappiness it's getting larger and larger and so at some point it can actually break apart um, it will fall those parts will fall slower than the, uh, the collector droplet that broke apart but those can be new collector droplets, okay? So it's kind of fun. Um, all right, so we talked about just now, that was warm clouds. The first several slides ago in this chapter, we talked about the Bergeron process in cold clouds. So we have warm clouds, collision coalescence, cold clouds, Bergeron process, and then cool clouds, basically, I think of it as you have, it's kind of segmented. You have up here, it's uh, cold enough to give you ice crystals, the Bergeron process, and underneath here, you have the collision coalescence process going.